Hi, hello, my dear students, my dear viewers and followers. Uh, uh, welcome to activity number nine in the course of business planning. Uh, this time we're going to work on estimating your circulating capital. Uh, I explain first of all the general idea, which is important. And then I go into a more detailed explanation. And then finally, in the same video, you will have a presentation or a demo of this method as applied to my own business concept. Uh, with this video, uh, I return to the practice of putting the instructional part and the demonstrational part in the same video, because this time it is one of those chapters in business planning which is essentially simple but essential. It is like a simple fundamental component of your business plan. Let's waltz. So, the essential idea, which I try to express both visually with that idea of uh, blood flow and heart pumping that blood, and uh, uh, with a verbal explanation. So those nice visuals, which I am, excuse me, uh, which I now allow myself to cover a little bit with my ugly mug. Uh, the essential idea is that in your business, there is a certain amount of liquid capital, which just needs to flow through your business like blood flow in order to keep the things running. It is uh, like a fundamental concept. You can even find it in all the treaties, like in that inquiry into the, re uh, into the nature and causes of the wealth of nations by Adam Smith, in the, uh, which was published in 1763, if I remember well, so uh, more than 300 years ago. And uh, this is uh, that idea that a business needs to pump capital as a heart would pump blood in order to keep going. And uh, it is important to take that into account. It is essential to take that into account. It is one of those points which frequently get uh, omitted by people who prepare business plans and, and, and that can contribute to the failure of the whole business project. Because the circulating capital is objectively there. I mean, you cannot uh, do without it. You have that circulating capital in any working business, whether you want it or not. Of course, there are some elaborate financial strategies to minimize that capital, yet it is there and you need explicitly to take it into account when you prepare the capital side of your business plan. And that circulating capital base is of course part of your assets and we call them current assets or also known as circulating assets. Keep in mind that terminology, it will serve later as we will progressively work on building the capital base of your business project. Now, as we compare it to the blood flow, there are three essential components in that blood flow. I will magnify the slide and uh, go like one by one through those bullet points uh, because it is important uh, to understand the basic logic. Just let me do a little correction in the arrangement of my slide. Okay, cool. Uh, so, those three essential components. Ex excuse me. First of all, uh, what do we need to put or to pump that capital through? We need to make that capital, that liquid capital, circulate through three essential items or through essential fields of your activity. First of all, through customer relations. 
second of all through a reserve stock of goods and raw materials and third of all through a necessary reserve of cash in the last uh, section in or in the previous section of this course when we were talking about planning our operational financials i showed you the idea of breaking even in a business of reaching the break even point and that the resulting phenomenon that uh, until you break even so until your business sort of learns how to cover its fixed costs with its gross margin until then you need like a cushion of cash to cover expenses which cannot be financed from your current gross margin so this is the first portion of cash that you need that cash you need to cover your unfinanced current expenses in the period of reaching your break-even point then customer relations in many markets you need to extend credit to your customers in order uh, to be competitive in order to like get into the market uh, that extended credit is frequently is frequently like the key tool key strategy of your marketing which allows you to acquire new customers and you can now imagine that every day of that credit that you extended to customers so every day of delay in payment for the bills you charge your customers every such day is like frozen money it's, it's frozen capital and the total liquid capital you freeze in those customer relations by extended uh, by extending credit to your customers that part of your circulating capital we call receivables now the next part is called inventories or the reserve stock of goods and raw materials uh, with inventories the general idea is that I will make it slightly bigger to make it more readable. So with uh, the inventories, the general idea is that in order to be somehow resilient to short term disruptions in your business, you need to keep a certain stock, both of your final goods that you offer for sale and your intermediate goods that you buy from external suppliers and just a need in order to make your final goods you need to keep those stocks in both of these categories just to st like stay in the flow hmm? uh, those stocks shouldn't be too big unless you want to speculate on them uh, but they have to be sufficient like to shield you against the current operational risk connected for example to the continuity of your manufacturing operations to the continuity of supply from your key suppliers those things can go wrong you can experience disruptions so you need that stock uh, reserve of goods in order to be shielded against that risk as for the way of calculating those things uh, you can calculate it in the following way each day of credit extended to your customers is like one 365th part of your annual revenue is like one day of sales hmm? which makes for example a customer credit of 14 days so if you allow your customers to pay after 14 days after they have been billed it makes you 14 divided by 365 days in the year it makes 3.84 percent of your annual revenue this is how you calculate receivables inventory follows the approximately the same rule each day on stock so each day that those goods are spent in your warehouse makes one uh, 365th part of your revenue if you are talking about your final goods or one 
365th part of your direct variable cost of goods sold if we are talking about the stock of intermediate goods. With cash, it is a little bit different. I feel like compelled to name it uh, because in the beginning you need enough reserve cash to cover the deficit between your gross margin and your fixed costs until you reach and pass the break-even point. That's the textbook. As you close by your break-even point, you have more and more freedom as for how much cash you need to hold in reserve. You need to figure out what exactly can your unexpected cash expenses be. And there is that thing that is observable for the last like 10 years in business, like across the board, across the world. In the presence of quick technological change, businesses have to be prepared for very quick strategic change. And when I, and when I say quick, it means weeks or months rather than years. I can give you an example. I even made another video on YouTube about the gaming business. I studied a Polish gaming company, uh, CD Projekt, the one who made uh, the game Witcher. They have years when they look like a bank, when like 60% of their capital is cash on bank deposits. And this is because in the gaming business, especially when you launch a new game, you need to face very quick decisions and you just need cash to be flexible in those decisions. So there is a current trend in business. In the presence of quick technological change, businesses hold growing reserves of cash. This is like a, an empirical phenomenon which you can observe by yourself. It is to keep in mind. Now, how you calculate it, or a short summing up of computational method. So, for calculating the capital, you need to finance your receivables. You take the days of customer credit, you extend on average like 7 days, 14 days, 30 days, whatever you fancy in your strategy, divided by 365 days. Uh, in the year and you multiply it by the annual revenue. And there is like a partial moral from the fairy tale. The more aggressive you want to be marketing wise, so you mo the more aggressive you want to be financially in attracting your customers by extending them credit, the more circulating capital you need in your balance sheet. With the inventories, here is a slightly simplified form formula, which you can decompose if you want to be really particular about it. So your inventories or capital to finance inventories, it is capital frozen in inventories of final goods on the one hand, and then capital immobilized in your inventories of intermediate goods, which can be calculated as the average number of days spent on stock divided by 365 days in the year and that multiplied by the sum total of revenue and the direct variable cost of goods sold. By the way, that sum in parentheses here, so revenue plus direct variable cost, it doesn't have really any economic meaning. Eh? It is just a computational ag aggregate that serves to calculate this specific component of your circulated of your circulating capital. And as for cash, essentially you hold whatever you fancy to. Still, you remember that principle, which is like a rule of thumb, a working principle. When things go rough in business, cash is king. Like really, really. You can experience it by yourself. Maybe you have already experienced it. When your business is facing tough moments, the amount of cash you have at hand without having to ask any bank for credit, that amount of cash gives you tangible power in negotiations. It gives you tangible impact on the market around you. Okay, so now we pass to showing this 
on the example of my own business concept. So it is a demo of those calculations with my own business concept. I just remind you that I have been going through the same business concept. So manufacturing small wind turbines and small water turbines across all the previous sections of this course. Here I am just extrapolating. Huh? So I summed up the operational financials of my business concept in the previous section, in section 8. And now I extrapolate on those numbers. So if you want to understand where the numbers on the next slides come from, you need to go back and watch those videos about operational financials. Here is, excuse me, not this slide. Uh, so here is like my starting point. The graph on this slide shows the expected revenue of my business and it is the blue line. It is like an averaged scenario between the two alternative scenarios I made in the previous section. And uh, the orange line with the triangles marked on it is the line of my of my direct cost of intermediate goods. Hmm? You can see here like a growing wedge of, uh, uh, of gross margin uh, as the sales grow and it is planned over 24 months. So the same planning horizon which I showed in the section devoted to, uh, to planning the operational financials. And now capital wise what does it give? So this is, first of all, I give the assumptions and then I give the results on the graph that you can see in the slide. So first of all, the assumptions. I will magnify them a little bit to make them more readable. So I want to be really aggressive in my uh, in my financial strategy so i extend my customers 30 days of credit so i build them and they can pay me after 30 days i keep a stock of goods for 14 days both final and intermediate why when i make turbines i need steel i need plastic i could need i, I could do with copper maybe with cobalt some with some electronic components and I just noticed that those things uh, have very fluctuating prices. For example, the price of steel can change from one week to, to another and quite brutally. So my idea is to keep a relatively big stock, like for 14 days, just to shield against the unexpected. And uh, I assume that the fixed costs in my business will be 2 million euro per month. It is much, but it is supposed to be a big business. And essentially I used that number just for the sake of demonstration, because it is a simple number quite uh, closely connected to the calculations which I presented in my operational financials in the previous section. So now I go to the graph and I explain its contents. The graph shows three components of, the, of my circulating capital. The green, the clear green bars correspond to the cash. I need to finance the process of breaking even. So the deficit between my gross margin and my fixed costs. The red bars correspond to my inventories with 14 days in stock. And the blue ones correspond to my receivables with 30 days of customer credit. You can notice that with all the assumptions I made before, initially my circulating capital is essentially equivalent to my fixed costs per month, so 2 million euro. And then it gently falls, so the sum total of those three bars gently falls uh, by the end of the first year, it is around 1.5 million euro. 
And then by the end of the second year, so by the 24th month of operations, it falls to around 1.2 million of euro and then it is likely to stay like to, to stay stable. And you can see another phenomenon uh, in that in, in that graph. Just let me scroll a little bit here. It is the phenomenon described in this rounded rectangle here. As I keep doing business, my cash turns into receivables and inventories. That's another like deep concept uh, when planning your circulating capital. In the beginning, you put cash in the blood flow of your business and then this cash turns into your operational current assets. So into those customer relations and the reserve stock of goods which serve to keep the business going. That's the idea. Okay, that would be all in that video about planning your circulating capital. As usually, see you in the next sections and I wish you a nice day and I wish you to enjoy science and your own life. Bye.